I, I thought he was going to be like wearing a bright orange jumpsuit or something like that. But, you know, that's not a bad color. <laughs> I feel like if he were to escape, though, he might be blending in pretty well with the uh, the. <laughs> like that's a good, that's almost like a camo color. So he might be blending in a little bit. Be seated. Oh my God, Bailiff yelling at us. <laughs> I feel like who is this Bailiff? Sometimes the Bailiff is like, okay, guys, be seated. This guy's like, be seated. Sit the fuck down. All right, I got my captions on, and here we go. Here we go. Good morning. Parties ready to proceed? Bench is ready, Your Honor. Bench is ready, Your Honor. All right, from the state, Mr. Waters. Mr. Thank you, Your Honor. Waters. Good morning. Uh, we're obviously here in the sentencing for the state versus Richard Alexander Murdoch. Uh, Your Honor, I have prepared the uh, sentencing sheets uh, signed up. If I can uh, hand those up to the clerk. I know, Linda. That's what I'm thinking of, too. I have three months just to relax until they do the, um, um, the Coburger stuff, so. <laughs> Maybe we'll go on vacation and just chill. All right, Creighton, I hope you got good sleep last night. Uh, Your Honor. Hope you slept uh, well. Very quickly, uh, the defendant has no prior record, uh, and the state has no uh, um, victim impact people who want to speak at this time. Uh, but I will address the court briefly. And I don't need, uh, Your Honor, to repeat the evidence uh, that Your Honor just heard for the past six weeks, uh, but it is overwhelming, and it shows this man to be a cunning manipulator, a man who placed himself above all others. Yeah, he got me a couple times. There were a couple times where I, like, genuinely felt sorry for him, and then I was like, wait, wait, I forgot what this guy did, you know? I, I, I got sucked in a couple times. <laughs> I won't deny that. Including his family. Uh, a man who violated the trust of so many, including his friends, his family, his partners, his profession, but most of all, Maggie and Paul. This is a very complicated situation, and I, I want to offer my condolences to the family that has suffered here. Uh, we have tried very hard to be respectful and sensitive regardless of what position any person took. Uh, because this family has suffered, and they've had to suffer in the public eye. And I want to offer my condolences to this family. I want to offer it for Maggie and Paul and Mr. Randolph, too, who I had the pleasure of working with on one occasion. But the reality remains is that despite all this attention, this case is about Maggie Murdoch and Paul Murdoch. And I'm so thankful that the jurors gave them a voice. And you heard about Paul, obviously there was the vote case, but you also heard him described as a fun-loving young man, a person who loved life, a person who would do anything for his friends, for anyone. And he's cut down as he was just starting to live his life. Yeah, it was only 22 years old, like 22 years old, man. Like, uh, I, I like the testimony of uh, one of the business partners or one of like Alec Murdoch's friend. Um, he felt like Paul, you know, he was a rough kid, you know, was doing a lot of dumb things, made a lot of dumb decisions, but he thinks, you know, once Paul would have found his calling, he could have, you know, done great. But yeah, I mean, I feel like 22 is really super fucking young. You heard about Maggie. You heard how sweet she was. You heard that she was a girl's girl who adapted to the outdoorsman life of her sons, how much she loved her sister and her brother-in-law and their children, and she was cut down in the prime of her life. Both of them, like everyone else, was unaware of who he really was. No one who thought they knew this man, no one who thought they were close to this man knew who he really was, and Your Honor, that's chilling. And I've looked in his eyes, and he liked to stare me down as he would walk by me during this trial. And I could see the real Alex Murdoch when he looked at me. Mm, Alec wasn't happy about that the comment. The gravity, the callousness, the selfishness of these crimes are stunning. The lack of remorse and the effortless way in which he lies, including here sitting right over there in this witness stand. Your Honor, a man like that, a man like this man, should never be allowed to be among free law-abiding citizens again. 
And I would submit to you that the only just sentence here to give justice for Maggie and Paul is the maximum, and that would be two consecutive life sentences. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, Creighton. Wait, who talks on the defense indicate side? that uh, no one, no victim would like to speak at this time. Uh, would any victim like to speak at any time during these proceedings? Your Honor, one of the things we did, and we did early on, uh, obviously, as I just said, it's a very complicated situation, but we made the decision early on. We've had our victim advocate here who's been doing a wonderful job, regardless of the viewpoints of any individual family member, to provide aid and service to them, and we made that decision. Uh, I'm informed by our victim advocate that uh, none of them wish to speak. Uh, the defense can certainly address that, but that's what I'm informed. But they certainly were offered the opportunity as is required. And I want to commend our victim advocate uh, on the excellent job she did in handling this complex situation that we wanted to be sensitive to because, again, I am. Oh, but you know what? Um, for victim impact statements, um, is it possible that if someone wanted to speak for Alec, they could do it as well, right? I feel like I remember seeing that in like trial before where like, the uh, the killer's mom will go up there and you know s speak on their behalf and stuff like that. So could technically Buster also speak on behalf of Alec as well? I'm not, none of us are not mindful of the fact of the suffering of this family. <coughs> I know it's late Chief Mark Keel is here. Um, um, would you like to address the court on any matters, Chief? Very proud of our agents' work they've done. I'm proud of the partnership that we've had with the Attorney General's office as we've had for many years. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember Burke's mom. Yeah, it was a, <laughs> it was a tough one to listen to. Again, Hi, the Rain. City of Justice is served, and, and we believe it has been. Thank you. For the defense. Uh, Your Honor, um, Mr. Griffin and I would have no comment. The defendant would like to address the court, though. Oh, he talks. Good morning, Your Honor. Oh, wow, I didn't know he was going to talk. I'm innocent. I would never hurt my wife, Maggie, and I would never hurt my son, Paul. Paul. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. And I've heard this being said so many times before about other accused killers who use the word hurt rather than kill murder slaughter and i've seen it being criticized so many times that the reason why sometimes they say hurt is because they're trying to minimize what they've done like i think jody says that a lot too about travis jody's like oh i would never hurt travis i would never hurt travis girl you ain't on the stand for hurting travis you on the stand for killing him anything further yeah, I don't know, man. That that was not powerful for me. Um, it, it sounded super defensive. There, it sounded like there was a lot of anger in that. Um, I felt like yeah, it should have been longer. You know, remember how I kept like I kept talking about about how he could should have been like, oh man, like I didn't do this. Like this is so crazy. Like we need to find the killers out there. Like I I can't believe that. You know, you guys are spending all your time and energy putting me in jail when the real killers of Paul and Maggie was out there. Like you guys have no idea. I've lived through that moment so many times in my in my head, you know, over and over how I could have done this, I could have done that, I should have been there. Like, I don't know, that would, to me would have been more impactful. But I think at this point, he's just kind of like, well, let me just give a statement out there. I'm over this shit. <laughs> like, I don't know. I guess he's just too lazy to do the tears and all that stuff anymore. Um, yeah. I don't think further comment is necessary, Your Honor. Thank right. you. Mr. Murdoff, you have come to the court for sentencing. Oh, yeah. I thought he was going to call them Mags and Paul Paul. Yeah, what happened to that? Man. <laughs> uh. It depends on the county and stuff like that. Sometimes it's orange. Sometimes it's like that color. This has been perhaps one of the most troubling cases, not just for me as a judge, for the state, for the defense team, but for all of the citizens in this community, all the citizens in this state, and as we've seen based on the media coverage throughout the nation, 
you have a wife who's been killed, murdered, a son savage, savage, savagely murdered, a lawyer, a person from a respected family who has controlled justice in this community for over a century, a person whose grandfather's portrait hang at the back of the courthouse that I had to have ordered removed in order to ensure that a fair trial was had by both the state and the defense. Man, I wonder, like, if his family was, like, up in heaven or something, looking down, like, what are they thinking? They're just like, what the fuck? Our family like us here! No! <laughs> And I've sat through the trial, not only have I sat through the trial, but also as the presiding judge of the state grand jury uh, sat through and participated in the issuance of search warrants of various sorts, bond hearings, and have had to consider many things. And we have this case, and I'm also assigned to preside over is it 99 others, at least 99 other cases. Uh, though testimony has come up regarding many of those other cases, uh, I will not make any comment with, with regard to any other pending matter as I have been assigned those cases as well. It's also particularly troubling, uh, Mr. Murdoch, because uh, as a member of the legal community and a well-known member of the legal community, uh, you've practiced law before me and we've seen each other at various occasions throughout the years. And it was especially heartbreaking for me to see you um, go, on, go in the media from being a, a grieving father who lost a wife and a son to being the person indicted and convicted of killing them. And you've engaged in such duplicitous conduct uh, here in the courtroom, mm. here on the witness stand, mm. and as established by the testimony throughout the time leading from the time of the indictment and prior to the indictment throughout the trial to this moment in time, uh, certainly you uh, have no obligation to say anything other than saying not guilty. <clears throat> and obviously as appeals are probably expected or absolutely expected, I would not uh, expect a confession of any kind. In fact, as I've presided over murder cases over the past 22 years, I have yet to find a defendant who could go there, who could go back to that moment in time when they decided to pull the trigger or to otherwise murder someone. I have not been able to get anyone, any defendant, even those who have confessed to being guilty, to go back and explain to me what happened at that moment in time when they opted to pull the trigger 
when they opted to commit the most heinous crimes known to man. In this case, qualifies under our death penalty statute based on statutory, the statutory aggravating circumstances of two or more people being murdered by the defendant by one act or pursuant to one scheme or course of conduct. I don't question at all the uh, decision of the state <gasps> not to pursue the death penalty. Wait, hold on. I have an invader in the backyard. Give me one second. But as I sit here in this courtroom and look around the many um, portraits of judges and other court officials and reflect on the fact that over the past century, your family, including you, Hi, Patty. I've been prosecuting people here in this courtroom, and many have received the death penalty, probably for lesser conduct. Oh, man, he knows it's coming. Remind me of the expression you uh, gave on the witness stand. Was it tangled? Oh, what tangle web we weave. What did you mean by that? I meant when I lied, I continue to lie. <clears throat> and the question is, when will it end? When will it end? And it, it's ended already for the jury because they've concluded that you continue to lie and lie throughout your testimony. And perhaps with all the throng of people here, they, for the most part, all believe, or 80, 90%, 99% believe that you continue to lie now when you, your statement of denial uh, to the court. Perhaps you believe that it's, it does not matter, uh, that there's n nothing that can mitigate a sentence given the crime, the crimes that were committed. You know, a notice of alibi was filed in this case by counsel in November, and we conducted a hearing, pretrial hearing, in which you claim to have been someplace else at the time the crime was committed. Mm. Then, after all of the witnesses placed you at the scene of the crime, at the last minute, or last minutes or days, you, 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 you switch courses and admit it to being there. And then that necessitated more lies and continued to lie. And um, Oh my God. And I said, where will it end? It's already ended for many who have heard you and uh, concluded that it'll never end. But within your own soul, you have to deal with that. <clears throat> and I know you have to see Paul and Maggie during the night times when you're attempting to go to sleep. I'm sure they come and visit you. I'm sure. And every night. Yeah, I'm sure. And they will continue to do so. And, and reflect on the last time they looked you in the eyes. As you looked the jury in the eyes. Um, I don't know a um, person who's always been such a gregarious, friendly person. And cause her life to be tangled in such a weave web, uh, such a situation that you um, yours have spun into. Uh, 
and it's so unfortunate because you had such a lovely family of such friendly people, including you, and to go from that to this. You know, your license to practice law has been stripped away from you. You turned from lawyer to witness. And, and now uh, have an opportunity to make your final appeal uh, as, a, as an ex-lawyer. And it's almost, uh, it's really surprising that you're waiving this right at this time. And if you opt to do so, it's on you. I, you're not compelled to say anything, but you have the opportunity to do so. Judge, I tell you again, I respect this court, but I'm innocent. I would never, under any circumstances, hurt my wife, Maggie, and I would never, under any circumstances, hurt my son, Paul Paul. Well, and it might not have been you. It might have been... Uh, the monster you become when you uh, take 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 opioid pills, maybe you become another person. Um, I've seen that before. The, you know, the, the person standing before me was not the person who committed the crime, though it's the same individual. Um, We'll leave that at that. Before announcing sentence on these cases, with regard to all of the other pending cases, are any of them here in Colleton, or I'm sure some of them are? Yes, sir. Half of them, or? Oh, I was saying that I, you know, I believe the monster part. It was the monster side of him that did it, but you know, not the monster and opioids part. I, I don't have that in front of me, but there are a substantial number of charges here. There's some in Hampton, Archburg, Beaufort, uh, Allendale. Um, there may be others that I'm not thinking of right now. We might have worn out our welcome here in Colleton. Um, Colleton's been great. Uh, they, they have been, and I'll take this opportunity to thank Sheriff Hill and. Um, all of the court officials and and really everyone I've met and, and dealt with while here in Colleton County just been great. But without any delay, we're going to schedule some of the other matters. Yes, I know Mr. Harputlian's scheduling is complicated and you've sacrificed quite a bit to be able to hear, be here um, defending uh, Mr. Murdoch as well as the Attorney General's office um, with all the other many, many things and obligations you have. And to be able to have the Attorney General here, um, Alan Wilson, for the period of time that he's uh, devoted to being here along with everyone else, it's, it's, it's been uh, uh, quite a sacrifice. But there are other victims whose cases deserve to be heard. And this case has jumped some of those other cases. Um, perhaps jumped it because of the, of this case resulting in an, an assault on the integrity of the judicial system in our state law enforcement in our state. Even during this trial, the law enforcement have been maligned for the past five or six weeks by one who had access to, uh, to the wheels of justice to be able to deflect the investigation, and as the evidence has pointed out in this case, the looming storm that Mr. Waters talked about, 
I can just imagine on that day, June 7, when a lawyer is confronted and confesses to having stolen over a half a million dollars from a client, and he has a tiger like Mark Tinsley on his tail pursuing discovery in the case involving the death of Mallory Beach. and having a father, for the most part, on his deathbed. I could imagine, or really can't imagine, uh, but I know it had to have been quite a bit uh, going through your mind on that day. But amazingly, to have you come and testify that it was just another ordinary day my wife and son and I were out just enjoying life. Not credible, not believable. You can convince yourself about it, but obviously you have the inability to convince anyone else about that. So if you made any such arguments as a lawyer, you would lose every case of that, like that cases you will never have an opportunity to argue anymore, except perhaps your own as you um, sit in the Department of Corrections. Anything further? No, sir. All right, Mr. Murdoch, I sentence you to the State Department of Corrections on each of the murder indictments in the murder of your wife, Maggie Murdoch, I sentence you for the term of the rest of your natural life for the murder of Paul Murdoch, whom you probably love so much. I sentence you to prison for murdering him for the rest of your natural life those sentences will run consecutive under the statute involving possession of a weapon during a violent crime there is no sentence where life a life sentence is imposed on other indictments that is the sentence of the court and you are remanded to the state department of corrections jeez and officers may carry forth on the imposition. Well deserved. Do we still Randy back there? I don't think we've seen Randy for a little bit too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And there we go. Take gets taken away again. Do we get to listen to what Harpootlian says? Absolutely well deserved for the murders. So Harpootlian, let's talk about what he's going to try to appeal. So I've heard that he wants to appeal, uh, letting all the financial stuff in. But you know what? Honestly, even if the financial stuff, even if it didn't come in, I don't think the financial stuff was really. I, I don't. I don't think. I think people would have con been convinced that he did the murders anyways, even without all the financial stuff. But the financial stuff was there just to show that like what the possible motive could have been. But like even if like you know, so let's say the jury didn't know that he scammed so many other people, his clients, his law firm partners and all that stuff. I think they sort of got him on guilty. There was just way too much damn evidence. Um, what is the other thing? Uh, the roadside shooting? Even if the roadside shooting didn't come in, I think still guilty, guilty. Before we adjourn, um, an order was issued uh, concerning maintaining the uh, juror's identity being... <laughs> 
is he gonna address when the camera panned to alec murdoch leaving the courtroom but then they showed all of the jury members on there <laughs> so you guys kept saying that and i completely missed it you're like it happened when alec walked out it happened when alec walked out i thought you guys meant it happened when alec walked out of the courtroom like when he was outside walking through the fence because i was like where i don't see it i don't see it but then yesterday when i was editing um i was editing when they the moment where they handcuffed alec and he walked out i was like oh that's where they showed the jury i'm mistaken i know what you guys were talking about i had no idea what you guys were talking about um I mean, people are going to appeal no matter what. Everyone has a right to appeal. So take your chances, you know, shit. If, even if you knew, you damn did it. Fucking appeal anyway. See what might sticks, right? Um, but here's the thing. Where is he going to get the money for the appeal? Who's going to be his appeal attorneys? I don't know if Jim and Harpootlian, if, because usually from what I've heard, when you get someone to do your appeal, you get like a new set of like appeal lawyers who are like specifically designed to appeal your shit. Um, one, is he going to hire new people or are people going to work on pro bono or like who's going to do the appeal for him? Does he have money? Is his family going to pay for it? Like, I don't, is, I don't know. People were saying that like, oh, maybe he has money hidden in the Caribbean somewhere. Like, I don't know. Is he going to be able to withdraw that? Or like, I don't know. Is he going to be afford the appeal? Or is he going to appeal via, is he able to appeal using a public defender? An anonymous, uh, that order was issued and uh, for the most part it's been complied with. Uh, except? Except for. <laughs> except yesterday when everyone, when they showed the jurors on the, on the camera. Uh, as far as I know, yeah, we're going to, we'll watch the thing. We'll watch the thing. For the jury leaving the courtroom yesterday. Or not the jury, but the defendant leaving. Harpoolian took the case pro bono. Oh, does it say that in an article anywhere? Where does it say that? Corgi, uh, what I read was the judge gave multiple warnings to the family, not on the camera. He was also moved their seats back in the courtroom. Um, I heard that apparently a sister may have passed something to him. Um, and then she was ordered to sit in the back. But like, as far as like the, the middle finger thing, like I've seen it, like this guy just like, he just noms on his fingers. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's anything, I don't know if the judge may have reprimanded him for something else that he did, but like, I think the middle finger thing, has just been, I don't know, it's been nonsense. Well, the guy was just biting his fingers. He's just like, he's just biting his fingers. You also see him biting his fingers when he's on the stand as well. Was he trying to flick off everyone in the courtroom? No, nah, this guy just bites his fucking fingers, man. He just noms on it. But yeah, as far as like being reprimanded for other things, it's possible courtroom while the jury is still seated um, right but he did he take protecting the, case for the identity of the jurors is, is certainly extremely important during the course of a trial uh, to ensure that no one makes contact with the jury or attempts to influence the jury the jurors have a right to continue that privacy beyond their jury service where are they gonna but they're not obligated to do so I guess they're not going to address it. And um, it would not surprise me if those, if jurors choose to come forward and to speak and uh, they're encouraged to do so, if that is their desire, I have no problem whatsoever with the jurors. Um, jurors. Unmasking themselves uh, and speaking freely with the media because they have undergone a life-changing experience. And, uh, as it relates to many of them, uh, but and some of them are here now, and I want them to know that should anyone attempt to harass them or annoy them, uh, please let me know, and I will address the issue. Secondly, um, there's a complaint now regarding the posting of autopsy photographs or photos like i don't know like hmm. i feel like if i would i care i don't know i think if i if i were to be murdered i don't think i would care if my pictures were up everywhere but if there was a loved one that was yeah that i was like super close with i wouldn't want their pictures everywhere like you know naked body on the autopsy table or like, you know, pictures where their brain is all out. It's like, I don't know. I wouldn't want that out there for my loved ones. For me, I don't think I would care. But I don't know. It came from within the, the courtroom. It's based on the direction of the, of the photographs. It did not come from the audience. It came 
somehow from within the well of the court. Oh, did pictures get leaked? Oh my god, that's so fucked up. Who leaked that shit? Um, Hi, Sherry. The the parties have requested an investigation of that. Um, I have my hands full doing my job, and I don't attempt to conduct any investigations beyond the conducting of a trial, um, but to the extent that law enforcement uh, decides to review that, that will be the responsibility of, of law enforcement. Well, yes. And of course, one of the reasons uh, we've sought to seal. Well, they weren't trying to, because you're not allowed to bring in other previous crimes and stuff to basically do a character assassination on the defendant. But the reason why the financial stuff was allowed, because it showed motive, um, why he would have, you know, wanted to kill his family members. So if they were doing to character assassinate him, yeah, you can't do that in a courtroom. But because it was showing that like, okay, this guy had a lot of stuff coming up, you know, he was about to be um, exposed for stealing from his clients the Paul partners were honing on on him. They were starting to, you know, be like, hey, like, what's up with these fees? Like, did you steal the money? And like, you know, it's like all the pressure that was building up. Because um, like same thing with the roadside shooting, right? Initially, that wasn't allowed in as well um, because, you know, you're not supposed to character assassinate the person. But the reason why the roadside shooting was allowed was because, well, there were a couple of times where Jim Jim, you know, when he was asking witnesses questions, he kept he kept bringing up Cousin Eddie. And then, you know, it went back and forth a little bit whether or not that was allowed. And at some point, Judge Newman was like, it's not allowed. Oh, you know what, Jim? Now it's allowed. And like, yeah, that whole thing was really crazy to me, too, um, because Jim just he messed up, man. He, he messed up. But I think even even without like going to the extensive history of him scamming his clients or even bringing up the roadside assistant and how he like the roadside shooting and how he um you know basically fabricated the entire lie or whatever and the reason why he decided to you know have this hitman assassination thing was because that same day or the day before he was also being confronted for stealing money you know i think even if they took all that out like the like i said like all the scams that he did previously and the roadside shooting i think they still would have came in with a guilty verdict there was just too much evidence too much it all just lined up so well and you know initially i thought initially i thought he hired people to do it um but if he hired people, I don't know. I, I really thought he hired people to do it. But then as more evidence rolled in, I was like, dude, this guy just fucking did it, man. And like he used two guns and he was trying to make it seem like it was two shooters. Like, oh, my God, what a mess. This is crazy. Graphic photos. Because the parties have a right to privacy and a mm -hmm. right to uh, those matters not being publicly disclosed. An excellent job. If oh, anyone God. has heard about the recent <laughs> settlement that Kobe Bryant's, <laughs> another sports analogy, Kobe Bryant's. Oh, yeah. Did you guys hear about Kobe Bryant's family? They were awarded, I think, like 23, 28 or 32 million. It's one of those numbers. I don't remember which one. But man, that was some messed up stuff, too. Um, That trial wasn't publicized. But dude, that was that was a fucked up case. But yeah, his family was awarded like 20, 30 plus million, which to her, to Vanessa, it's that's probably like nothing. Like the fact that her husband's pictures was like already shown and her daughter and stuff like that, like, dude, that's so fucked up. It was just 28 million, right? Okay, I was kinda close. I was kinda close. <laughs> Wife just made with the with Los Angeles County and others out there over uh, certain disclosures of information involving the death. Kobe Bryant, um, you know, liability can be substantial. Yeah, and, who's leaking this? And um, it, it's a risk for the most part. For what? Not, that's not worth taking. Uh, so we'll let everyone judge themselves accordingly within that, with that regard. Aside from all that, our business is done here in Colleton County. And I get to use my gavel. Wait, what? 
that's okay. Not to make fun of him, but that's a dinky little gavel. I thought judges had like giant gavels. <laughs> Why is he so tiny? Won a few times during this trial and order that court be adjourned. Signy die. Yeah, I feel so bad for Vanessa. 